see she got a good hip over there. She doesn't have any hip here. Her knee doesn't bend or move at all. Can you ask her what happened to her hip? When did her hip hip disease start? No injury, just started to develop arthritis. Imagine being young and being crippled by arthritis. Imagine being unable to sit down without help. Imagine living in a place where your livelihood depends on walking and not having the resources to help yourself. Imagine if someone offered to change your life. You just tell her we're going to make her walk. I can be. Operation Walk was conceived by Dr. Lawrence Dorr when he and a small group of doctors went to Russia to teach surgeons there how to perform hip and knee replacement surgery. It was in Russia that Dr. Dorr realized that there was a need to share his expertise to others on a grander scale and that he should not only teach the surgeons but include nurses and physical therapists so patients would have the best chance of having a great outcome. A typical trip is one week long, and in that week, the staff arrive early and start right in, unpacking supplies and setting up the operating rooms and the floors where the patients will go through their rehabilitation. It may all look like mass confusion, but it's anything but. While the staff is unpacking supplies, the surgeons and medical staff are busy screening the prospective patients. Each patient must go through a medical examination by one of our internists to ensure the patient is medically fit to go through with the surgery. My role is to clear the patients medically preoperatively to make sure that they're an acceptable risk for surgery um, and then uh, see them when they come out of surgery and help manage them medically uh, until they're discharged. Then the patient is seen by an orthopedic surgeon who conducts the physical examination. The gratifying part of what we're doing here is that uh, uh, first of all, the patients are very disabled, and the longer they wait, the worse they get. And uh, eventually, many of these patients would go off their feet and they wouldn't be able to walk. And no matter who you are, you, it'd be very difficult to do a joint replacement and get them back on their feet. When all of the prospective patients have been examined, the Operation Walk team, along with the host surgeons, meet and go through a screening process to rank the patients according to need and health. This is a 49-year-old lady who's going to have her left knee replaced. She can walk for less than a block and she finds walking, uh, getting up and downstairs difficult. Once the decision has been made, a list of patient names is posted and the patients are told when to be at the hospital for their surgery. These are hard-working, everyday people who need their mobility and independence to carry on a normal life and to work and feed and care for their families. Operation Walk's mission is to better the lives of those who are experiencing debilitating arthritic joint disease and who cannot afford to have the required surgery on their own. Operation Walk does more than just operate on the patients who need surgery. Operation Walk team members teach their counterparts so the staff from the host countries can move forward and become independent and confident in performing total joint replacement. Our surgeons teach the host surgeons the procedures, while the internists and anesthesiologists teach their methods of medicine as well. The nurses teach how to care for the patients post-operatively, and the physical therapists instruct how to best get the patients up and walking and on the road to independence again. For the next three days, the OR team works nonstop. The patients are made ready in the pre-op area. Sedatives are given, vital signs are monitored, and an epidural is put in place to numb only the area of the body that will be operated. While the surgery takes place, the patient is usually awake and aware of everything going on during the surgery, while experiencing no pain at all. Most surgeries are routine, but sometimes, with the inventory we have on hand, modifications are necessary. Dr. Dorr and I are about to do uh, another operation, again on a 26-year-old lady with very, very end-stage arthritis. She is a, a, what they call multiple epiphyseal dysplasia, but it's a, an inherited form of dwarfism. And uh, 
it's been a real challenge because here we are with typical implants that our, our, our benefactors have been very, very kind to provide to us, but they're way too big. So we've been able to take one of the smallest implants and in the machine shop here, actually grind the implant down to a smaller size. It's sort of like uh, orthopedics uh, 50 years ago, but uh, I know it's going to work and she's going to be very gratified for this. It'll change your life. The surgeons and operating room staff work continuously for three days to maximize the limited time they have, resting only as long as it takes to clean and restock the operating rooms. Then another patient is brought in for surgery. Operation Walk runs four operating rooms non-stop, 10 hours a day for three days. Each case needs drugs, bandages, sutures, gloves, and gowns. It all needs to be in place prior to the arrival of the patient. We take every supply we use over there down to the last band-aid. We've gotten anesthesia supplies, we've gotten IV supplies, we've gotten antibiotic supplies, we've gotten suture supplies. And all those companies have donated them and all the team donates their time. As the patients arrive to the wards, everything is in place and it's just a matter of keeping the patients comfortable. The patients are brought to the patient wards after surgery, where there is a men's ward and a women's ward. There isn't much privacy in these areas and the patients become close friends and create a common bond of learning to trust their new mobility. They encourage each other to walk and exercise. This is done as soon as possible, usually the same day of their surgery. Operation Walk's mission is nothing more than a monumental task, all done by volunteers who leave their families behind for a week without pay in a country that is completely foreign to them, where often the communication is difficult. If you were to ask any of the volunteers if the mission is a hardship, they would each tell you the same thing. It's worth every moment away from home to see the people who they have helped. If there were any way that I can give time to any organization, I couldn't think of a better one. It's worth the effort when you see a man who can now walk and work his farm pain-free. It's worth it when a mother will have the mobility to walk and play with her young children. It's worth it to see people get back to a part of their lives that was lost due to a painful arthritis. I'm a farmer. I'm poor. I don't have any money. Some people told me to come here. I came and I was told there was possibility I could have surgery. Yeah, we want to thank you all your efforts and all your your kindness. Thank you all, all the things you do for my father. These people become productive members of their societies. Uh, they marry, they enjoy life again. It's fantastic to see. It's very satisfying. It's amazing, uh, the patients in general here uh, are so grateful and the families are so grateful and they're so motivated, it's unbelievable, like uh, they will be up walking the day of surgery even after a revision or even bilateral joint replacements and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very gratifying to see. Operation Walk has given back the freedom of pain-free walking to so many in the past 10 years people from around the world who are now once again self-reliant, confident, and a contributing member of their society. We hope to always have the support needed to continue our mission of helping others. Thank you for watching. We want to thank you for your interest in us. He has given us new life. Thank you. We appreciate it.